The Prince of Persia franchise is huge, providing players with fluid acrobatics and parkour to a previously unseen level, and in this episode we're going to take a look at where it all began. The original DOS game was created by one man, Jordan Mechner, for the Apple II in 1989 and was ported to almost every format from TurboGrafx CD to the Nintendo DS and iPad in 2012. The fluid and lifelike motion the franchise is known for began with this game. Mechner used a technique called rotoscoping. He filmed his younger brother running and jumping about, and then traced this to make the game sprites. This flew against the robotic run cycles that characterised the platformers of the day, and instantly makes traversing the dungeons look and feel awesome. Prince of Persia literally drops you into a dungeon, expecting you to run, leap, scale and sword fight your way to victory in an environment filled with traps and pixel perfect jumps. What the level design lacks in visual variety, it more than makes up for with devious traps. Pressure plates, spike pits, deadly falls and crumbling pathways all stand in your way. Each requires a different approach and they're often used in conjunction with each other. As has become a staple in the series, traps and environmental hazards often are combined to make vicious puzzles, needing a considered approach, or at least many restarts. The latter option, while at times inevitable, is not recommended as there are no checkpoints. Death results in beginning the current level again, defeating the enemies and solving all the puzzles on the way. Another innovation this game has is you have no lives to speak of, although you do have a health bar. Instead, you are given an hour to complete the game, and can die as many times as you like within that time limit. Sounds generous, doesn't it? Well, when you factor in that you can easily spend 15 minutes dying to the same series of traps through of mistimed jumps, or losing duels with swordsmen, no, it's not all that generous, and you feel the pressure early on to complete things as fast as you can. But this brings me to my only real gripe about Prince of Persia. The movement, while it is accurate and responsive, is not very granular. The prince runs the distance of two floor tiles with one press of the movement button, which brings with it the problem of platforms with tile lengths that are odd numbers. The only solution I've found to this is to repeatedly crouch or jump vertically in the direction you need to go. This will move you forward a few pixels at a time, but it's a really inelegant and time-consuming solution. Otherwise, the game design is great, considering it was made by one man, and like most great titles, takes simple concepts, refines them, and then iterates upon them. The sword fighting is outstanding, especially when most games of the era focused on projectile combat. It is twitchy and lightning quick. Footwork and parrying are just as important as striking, which is analogous to real-life sword fighting. To defeat an opponent, you have to exploit his openings, while ensuring you provide him with as little as possible. As you can only take three hits at full health, and each fight is likely to be one of many. Perfect form is necessary to progress. Prince of Persia is tough as nails, despite the infinite lives, and when this is coupled with a wealth of secrets dotted around it, it's unlikely you will complete the game in any one sitting but the fluid acrobatic movement and excellent swordplay is enough to keep drawing you back in. It is easy to see this game's influence, from the Prince of Persia franchise to other titles such as Mirror's Edge. To this day, the Prince of Persia game still utilises the structure created in the original Prince of Persia, the puzzle, then combat structure, and it showed the world the value of motion capture in games. A fantastic, influential slice of retro gaming that will have you coming back to it no matter how many times you fall down the same spike pit. Prince of Persia is well worth a look in. Besides, it's freeware now, and using Defend, a DOSBox GUI, makes it really easy to set up. Go check it out, what's your excuse? This has been Westlaw, over and out. <laughs>